EAV does come in at 360 million. That takes your tax rate over that four dollars to 4.286, which essentially, in this example, you lose 600,000 of tax revenue because of the maximum tax rate. So really, here in Lake County, you sort of have two wham uh, a double whammy. You have the PTEL, which caps based on the CPI, plus in some funds you have a maximum tax rate. So it'd be nice if the state legislature would eliminate the maximum rates so you don't have to worry about this because you're already capped. You're capped at 1.5%. So this is an example of what we're trying to avoid. And here's the EAV history. As you see over the last five years, it's gone down. And here's our funds, and let's show them the funds that do have that maximum rate. You see the education fund at four. We're right at that special ed fund, which is also in fund 10. Yeah, we're right at that. The O&M fund, we're right at the maximum there as well. So our goal is to try to make sure that we can levy as many dollars as possible and not ditch the maximum. So now, what, what is the amendment that we're asking the board to approve? Transfer additional tax levy dollars from fund 40 to fund 10 due to the larger decrease in AAV than we originally thought. Again, the way the system works here in Illinois is not necessarily fair because the board adopts the budget in September. The board doesn't levy a tax, an estimated tax levy until December, but it's not until April until you find out what the actual tax is. So it's all guessing and projecting initially. And so in our case, we under-projected what we thought the EAV was going to decline. We initially had 731,000 transferred from Fund 40 to Fund 10. And we, when the board certified the levy, we changed that and added another 510,000 to it to make it $1.2 million. And so that we're correcting what was the original budget in September with this budget amendment. The other one is, the other big one is, as we were planning for the referendum in the spring, we incurred some architectural costs. Or, and we, the plan was that when the referendum passed, the revenue from the referendum would offset those costs. When the referendum did pass, we had a big, big expenditure in our fund 60 of $506,000. And so we are correcting that by transferring dollars from fund 20, which is the O&M fund, to fund 60 to correct that. A few of the other things is we held off on paying for the literacy textbooks until this year because we had the big IMRF payment we made last in last year's budget. Schools also received some donations during the year that we wanted to account for, as well as we also allowed schools to reallocate dollars from one line item to another line item. Essentially, that was resulted in no change in the budget, but it may have changed some of those functions, instructional versus support. So here's an example of the budget the board approved in September. The reason I show you this is because while the goal is for the major funds to have revenues equal to expenditures, not all the funds have that. As you see, the debt service doesn't have revenues equal expenditures, and that's because taxes are collected in one year and the debt payments are made in another year, so there is, they're never going to really match. The other one is capital projects. We have $178,000 fund balance in capital projects, and we've been trying to eat that down each year by doing certain projects out of that fund. Now, with the expenditures for the architect fees, that pretty much wiped out the fund balance, as well as added, we budgeted 60000 the actual budget needs to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 510000 And then this life safety, we built up some dollars in life safety, and we're using those dollars to do the village front interest, the Murphy front, front interest this year. So that's why we have 600000 as a expensive budget, but we're only putting 322000 of revenue in there. Here's the change between the, the adopted budget and the amended budget. As you see, the 76000 in the education fund, those are the donations received by the schools. 
by changing the tax le projected tax levy as well as, in as reducing that and increasing the revenue for the transfer, that's net to zero. So the only change in the Ed Fund is going to be the donation. As you see here, there's an increase of 510000 That's the transfer to the Education Fund. And the three hundred fifty is transferred from the Fund 20 Fund to the Capital Projects Fund. So the expenditure side, you basically see the same thing. Where originally we had a budget of sixty thousand capital projects, we increased that to five hundred ten to cover the expenditures for the architect fees. And here's the same budget that I showed initially in total revenue expenditure, showing the reduction in the O&M fund of three hundred fifty, the capital projects. The revenues of 350, because there's 510, here we had $178,000 of fund balance. So that will still have a positive fund balance, but it won't have as high as a positive fund balance. This is a slide we've shown in the past. And the only reason I'm showing it, it really hasn't changed much, other than by adding to that transfer from fund 40 to fund 10, it takes the amount spent on education of students from 84 to 83 and increases the Central services from seven cents to eight cents. So, but still, you know, other than 92 cents goes towards educating students. Recommendations is that the board approve the budget amendment later this evening. We'll then submit it to DSB within 30 days, and we'll also buy law or the party from the district website, so we'll do that. So with that, that concludes. If there's any questions, I'll be happy to answer questions from the community as well as any board members.